Uh, all right, so we're here to talk about must-have blogging tools. And again, this is Frank's presentation. I'm going to go with his slides and his recommendations, but I'm going to, because I'm here and I got to, you know, horn in, I'm going to voice a couple of my own opinions at the same time. <laughs> so um, this is about who's Frank, and so we can skip it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so what what he was saying what he was talking about today, but I'm going to talk about the same thing. So what I'm talking about today is idea generation, planning, creating and editing, and marketing of your blog posts. So from idea generation to post publish, which is once you publish, you're not done, right? Got to promote that thing. Doesn't do any good to publish it if nobody reads it, <laughs> right? We're going to follow on all of those. So his first topic was idea generation, coming up with ideas for your posts. Now, if any of you are anything like me, I come up with mine when I'm running or exercising on my iPod. For me, a song makes me think of it. So unfortunately, I have to keep repeating that quote in my head so I can get somewhere to write it down. Hopefully, you don't have that problem. Or in the shower. <laughs> but he has some tools. If you can't come up with the idea, you can't come up with that perfect topic. He's got a couple tools here. So the first one is Buzz Sumo, and that's, I know you can't see it, B-U-Z-Z -Z, Sumo, like the wrestler.com. And this is a program that analyzes and your key search to tell you what kind of topics might work with that. So you basically just plug in, and remember, sometimes you're going to see keyword, you're allowed to use a key phrase. So don't freak out that you have to sum up your whole idea in one word. Don't write a whole sentence into these things, because it's going to get a little wonky. <laughs> But if you're, if you're looking, if say your topic is content marketing, you don't have to just put content or try to make some weird hybrid of content marketing. Um, you can just go ahead and put content marketing and it'll be fine. And you don't have to do dashes or commas. Don't put commas. <laughs> okay. So that's one tool, it's buzzsumo.com. I, I don't specifically use this tool. I've used buzzsumo products of different kinds, so it's, but it's very well spoken of in the industry and you'll be able to get some ideas for your blog posts. The next one is Google.com Trends, and this is basically just going to tell you, so Google.com slash trends. And it's basically going to tell you just what's trending on a specific topic. So if you put in something like content marketing, it might give you a bunch of different options, like visual content marketing, or what's a buzz at the time is blogging versus uh, blogging versus video blogging. So it's going to tell you just what's, what the trending topics are under your main key phrase. Does that make sense? So this isn't necessarily going to generate something for you. It's going to let you know what's hot, what's popular at the time, based on your key phrase that you put in. OK? Oh, before I even go on, if you have a question while I'm talking, go ahead and just raise your hand. I don't, I don't feel like you have to wait till the end, because I know sometimes you have a question, and you try to remember it till the end, and then you get to the end, and you're like, I forgot what I was going to ask, <laughs> which is never fun. All right, HubSpot, very well known in the industry, and they have a topic generator. Because this URL is really, really long and you can't see it, <laughs> um, just wait for the slides. But it's their hubspot.com, and if you look for the topic generator, you'll be able to find it. Now, it actually does it based on nouns. You have to put in nouns. You have to put in three nouns that have something to do with what you think you want to write about, and then it will help you with the process. So you wouldn't want to put in marketing, because marketing is probably, it's a noun and a verb, so it might not do so well. So you might want to put in puppy, Kitten, uh, what's another one? <laughs> Giraffe. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, whatever you're gonna pick. But don't put in verbs or adverbs or adjectives. It's not gonna work so well. So it's a little bit different. I mean, you have to kind of think outside the box about what might make it work. And that's why it's a little bit different. Because they're trying to be a little bit different and not just have the same idea generation of every other tool under the planet. This, now, HubSpot, as many of you know, is actually a fairly expensive product. But this part of it is, is free. Important idea generator. I don't know anything about this, but I looked at it real quick so I would not sound like a complete moron when I went through his slides. You basically just, like many of them, you just put a subject in, you, um, you hit an arrow to give you some ideas. But it says for the best results, which I know you can't see, so I'm going to read those to you. Don't capitalize your keywords. Use the singular version of a keyword, so don't stick an S on the end. So don't say blogs, say blog. Don't say videos, say video and revise the results to create your own fantastic results. So if you get something that's a little bit off, figure out a way to revise that key phrase to get you some different results. And I would say to do that in any idea generating topic. Because sometimes what happens is we are fixated on this has to be what it is, but if we just tweak our key phrase a little bit, we'll get better ideas. Because 
sometimes we're all too, we're busy people and we go for that immediate what we think is going to work instead of sitting there and brainstorming and trying to, I know I hate the phrase, think outside the box. But if we do that, we're going to come up with stuff that, if it doesn't feel so, big, already been done, already been written, already been read, already been tweeted. So just take a few minutes to see how you could kind of tweak your key phrases that you're searching and you'll get more results, you'll get different results. Reddit. <laughs> okay. So before I, warn, uh, before I talk about this one, just a warning, if you go into certain Reddits and subreddits, it can get a little volatile, the conversation. So just consider that you might get into some conversations that maybe aren't 100% appropriate <laughs> all the time. And they also can get a little hostile sometimes. So you have to go in knowing that. But it is great if you want to hit a topic that's niche driven or a specific a specific group of people driven because there are so many reddits and subreddits that are really targeted toward a specific group of people. So motorcycle riders who barbecue after every ride. I mean ridiculous but you can really niche down within Reddit because there are so many and they're called Reddit's like the main categories of content marketing and then subreddits would be blogging, uh, visual marketing all those sorts of things that come under the main topic. So you can really niche down to different topics. But I did want to warn you, while it is a very good tool if you're looking for stuff, you can wander into subreddits where you might feel a little uncomfortable. So I, I just wanted to make sure everybody knew that. All right, I'm actually gonna pop in with a couple of my own here before we go to the next topic because um, these are some of the kind of like those um, more, not this tool, this is just some things you can do. A good RSS feed of other industry and peer sites can be a great way to come up with ideas. You're not going to copy anybody's content, but you're going to see what is being written about, what is popular at the time, and then add your own spin to it. Nothing that has been written about in the last five years is, has truly been new. It's all been said before, it's all been written, it's all been read, it's all been tweeted, and any other form of you know, social media has all been shared. As long as you take that topic and don't copy anybody's content verbatim, you actually write it yourself and put your own spin on it, you're creating new content. You're creating content that is worthy of being shared because you are saying what you think about the topic, okay? The other idea, which isn't in here and it's not a tool either, is look back at your previously posted articles, your previous publishes, Look at your analytics, see what was popular, and is there a way for you to take that topic and rewrite it or republish it with a new spin on it? Can you update it? Is there a new version of the tool you wrote about? And go ahead and switch your feature image so you have something new so you can share it again and it doesn't look like it's already been shared. And just modernize it, make it new, make it fresh, and share that topic again. It was popular the first time for a reason. It'll probably be popular again when you update it. There's nothing wrong with revising old content and using it again. Now, if you create a totally brand new post out of it, you might want to consider doing a redirect from the old post to the new. You might want to. That's really up to you. It's how you think it's going to work. If you think it's going to cause problems with if Google's going to think it's repeat content and all that, then we're not going to go into all that because that's a topic all of its own. But that's your choice to decide, OK? Now, planning and organizing your ideas. I bet you guys are going to know a lot of these already. So, how many people in here use Evernote to store your blog ideas? Okay, right. So, if you don't want to just keep a bunch of drafts in WordPress itself, and some people don't like to do that, I'm going to admit I have like 325 draft posts in WordPress <laughs> waiting to be written. Some will finally be deleted once I realize the topic is old and boring because I never actually wrote it, but I do that. Um, but Evernote is a fantastic place to store your ideas, because you can just go in and type an idea if you want to, but they also have a thing called the clipping tool. So you can clip snippets of uh, another post and say, okay, I know I want to write and use my own take on this, and you can save it right to Evernote. So this will be one of your browser tools, the clip it tool, and you can do that. You can save an image into Evernote. So you're not stuck to just typing out your thought, you know, that, that you remembered from the shower, right? <laughs> You can do all sorts of different things. And I'm sure Frank had some very specific things to share about this, and I'm sorry that he's not here to share them with you. But it's a wonderful tool. Now, he didn't put it in there, but if you like Google Drive better than Evernote, 
the same thing. You can do the same thing with that. I, when I'm not posting them in posts waiting to be published years down the line and hogging up all my space, I put them into Google Drive. So it works much the same. It doesn't have a clipping tool, but you can certainly put images into your files to save for later. You can have all different kinds of stuff. Links. You can make spreadsheets, actually. You can put videos in there. You can actually put a presentation, pull a presentation into it if you want to. So that's, it's a great place. So either one of those works about the same. Google.com keep. This is, um, this is going to be something like, this is sort of like a, a save it to read for later kind of thing, more so than um, it's, it's capture what's on your mind. So it's really, I don't really know how to explain it, because again, I didn't have a whole lot of time to prep for this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but um, it says save your thoughts wherever you are. So it's, a, it's a, an app for your phone. So what you could do is you can put a little snippet, like while you're on your run, uh, this song title, I thought I could write about this. Uh, that I saw this sign on the road, you can take a picture of it and keep, because you know sometimes you're, you're driving down the road and you get an idea from like a sign on the road, you're like, aha, uh -huh, and you're like, well, darn it. Now, again, let me just add, if you're driving, don't take a picture of it, <laughs> okay, <laughs> please. Hopefully so if somebody else is in the car, that's where the zone you have to do the mental picture. You go, I got it, that sign. And you have to repeat it to yourself over and over again the whole drive home. That's on, that's on, that's on. That's right. <laughs> All right, so here we got Trello. Now, Trello is a really interesting tool. It's sort of like a virtual bulletin board. So in a way, it's kind of like a non-visual Pinterest of sorts. Trello, T-R-E-L-L-O.com. And once you get to, you can set up these different boards, and you can set them up with different topics, and you can add little subboards under it. And they're very, it's very visual, even though it's not picture-driven. So this is for the kind of person who likes to see everything in front of them. They don't have to go back and forth from document to document. You can see everything there. So you can't really see it, but um, he's got these different small boards here. And he's got article ideas, researching, on hold. Those are the ones that you decide, yeah, I don't want to write about that right now. <laughs> Maybe that topic is a little too volatile right now. Writing, so he's got um, like writing article ideas there to put editing and graphics. He's got some ideas for some different types of posts. I'm just gonna share some of the ones he shared because I'm sure he meant for them to be shared for a reason. Give the gift of Trello gold. Unlimited labels. These are all these are all things about Trello. So he's letting you know that Trello gold is the premium version. Unlimited labels, you can have as many labels as you want. No, that's a bike shop case study, no, no, no. Road mapping with a public Trello board. Again, there's a public board, so it's kind of like a Reddit of sorts or something where you can see what other people are doing. How to use Trello like a pro. And introducing power-ups, calendar card aging. That's part of Trello too. You can actually have where your, your cards at a certain age that get moved. So say so you kind of have like an in progress, but it doesn't ever get to the next step. It'll move to like an archive folder. And so it's kind of nice that it automatically does that for you. So if it's been sitting there for six months, whatever your time frame is, and you haven't updated it, it moves it so you don't have to like worry that you'll have so many in that, in that boost that you can't get around it. So it's pretty nice. Again, it's for somebody who likes it all in front of them at once. While in Evernote or something, you kind of have to move around from note to note and see, and here's all in front of you. If you're that kind of planner. And you know, we all plan and we all learn differently. So it's, if you like it all in front of you, this is really good for that. Am I talking too fast? Okay. Now the post schedule is a little bit different because this is actually sort of like a plug-in and also a social media tool at the same time. So you have to, you, and it, you get a free trial, but this is a paid, this is a premium. It's not a freemium program. So CoSchedule actually kind of works with, excuse me. I didn't realize I still had a gun in my mouth. How horrible, I'm a horrible person. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty then. <laughs> Chewing on my gum in front of you. CoSchedule, it's, it's a tool, and it has, it has a lot of different features. It can help you with your social sharing, that's part of what it does. But it can also store ideas for later use and you can, it, it will put them into, into a calendar within WordPress. So within WordPress itself, you can use a lot of different calendar planner tools like editorial calendars. CoSchedule has its own. But the reason why it's unique is it also has the functionality of once you publish it, you can tell it that you want it to, to automatically go to Facebook or you want it to automatically go to Twitter or one of those others at the same time. So it's a multi-purpose tool. It's not just for like, editorial calendar use or storing ideas. But the reason you use it, why he's put it in here is that you get an idea for a blog post, you can put it in there. 
and you can put it on a specific day. Like, I'm going to write about this on this day. And it sort of gives you reminders, and then you can flesh it out from there, and then it'll do all the other steps with it. Does that make sense? So it, it's kind of a multi-purpose tool, so you can actually use it for more than just the idea sharing, but because it's in this part, and again, I don't know for sure, I think that's why he put it here. And that one's free or paid? It is paid. It's a paid program. You get, a, like, I think you get a 10-day free trial, and then it is, it is a premium plugin. Now, WordPress itself has its, you know, really simple, not a lot of bells and whistles, editorial calendar plugin, and that's strictly a calendar. So it's going to just give you a little window and you can put in the idea, I'm going to write this on this date. You can drag and drop them to different dates, because we you know what we all do. We say we're going to write about this topic on Thursday. We get to Thursday, and we're like, I don't want to write about that. <laughs> so you drag it down to the next Tuesday or six months away, <laughs> if you're feeling not feeling like it. So I do that all the time. That's why I have 8 million drafts. So I can just pick and choose what I feel like writing about that day. But it lets you, it's a drag and drop simple calendar where you just, you basically just move the title around. You still have to go in and write a blog post in the normal way that you would, you know, a post. You have to set up a new post. But this is just a simple drag and drop calendar. I think it has reminders. I think it'll send reminders to you. But it's very, very simple and it's free. All right. Edit Flow plugin is another one of those. Now, this one actually gives you progress reports. So, as the, the WordPress itself one is just the title. You're just going to see the title. This one tells you the progress. It's a draft. This one's pending review. It'll tell you when it's published. Scheduled means that it's ready to go, but you're not doing it for, you know, you're going to publish it next week. So it's not really all that different, but that it gives you the, the status. So you can see it right there instead of having to click through to see the status. I don't really, you know, I don't understand why it tells you it's published. You're going to know if you published it already. But I didn't. Now we get to a little bit more fun part. So you've got the idea generated, you've got a great title, you've got an idea of when you're going to publish it. Now we're actually going to write the thing and make it sound and look right. So we're creating and editing. So we've got the co-schedule headline analyzer because if they don't like the headline, they're not going to click through and read it, right? So this is a really simple tool that's going to give you a score. And the higher the score, the better it is. So this one is not good. It's only 26%. Let me tell you what that title is. Let's go to WordCamp. <laughs> That's not a good title. <laughs> Probably, and here's why. I can actually tell you why that's not a good title. Because WordCamp would be the featured phrase, right, of the event. It's not at the front. It's not at the front. It's the last word. And that alone is not, you know, you can put a word. You don't have to put your keyword in the front of it. You can get around with other things. But it's pretty vague. Other than that, it's pretty vague just in general. Let's go. Yeah, it's a call to action, but it's not really a call to action. So this one got a 26. And it says it's a B plus because it's, you know, it says it's, it says it's you know, uncommon. But the word balance isn't all that great. And that word balance is where is that phrase that's really important in the title. So, but it's a great tool. If you don't think your headlines are really drawing the kind of click-throughs that you need, you might want to use a tool like this. I do warn you, don't use clickbait titles. If your title has nothing to do with your topic, your readers are not going to read anything else you've ever done. If you disappoint your readers by putting a topic that has nothing to do to draw them in, but it has nothing to do with your title, um, to your, your content, they're not coming back. You're going to lose them. Okay? This one is very popular. It's the Hemingway editor. And basically, you put in your text and it tells you, are you too wordy? Are you taking too long to get to the point? Are you using too, are your words too long? Are you using 25 cent words when a nickel word would suffice? And um, are you using adverbs? Okay, here's one. People use a lot of adverbs sometimes that they don't need to use, which turns it into passive voice when you stick adverbs in. Um, so you always want to be writing an inactive voice. You've heard that a lot, I'm guessing. So this will tell you if you're doing all that. But I have a caveat to this one, okay? If your native writing style is not short and terse, and to the point like Hemingway's was, don't take this with a grain of salt. Don't completely lose your own voice because a tool tells you to. Okay? I ramble in my blog post. I do. I, obviously, I ramble when I speak. <laughs> so, so I ramble when I write. My audience likes it because it's me. You have to write so that you like it and so that your audience likes it. 
certain kind of blogs shouldn't be short, terse, without any colorful language. So this is going to tell you if your sentences are too long. If you speak in long sentences, write in long sentences. I'm not saying use run-on sentences with no punctuation. By all means, please use commas. <laughs> please use periods in the right place. But if you're not a very short, if it's not technical writing, point, if it's not, if it's not an article to go out immediately on the, in the newspaper, that's a different kind of writing, okay? If you're telling a story and it makes good sense in the story to have a, pre, a preliminary, put that preliminary in. Set the scene for your writing with the right kind of writing style. So I'm not saying to not use this, but if it completely like tells you everything about your writing is wrong, that might not be the best tool for you. Okay? If it helps you by maybe maybe it's better to make this two sentences instead of one, that's different than it telling you you get an F, everything is highlighted in a different color. It's probably not the right tool for you. Yes? Can you use this tool for regular content? You can, you can put any, yes, it doesn't have to be just be for blog posts. This is for any writing. You can put any, you could take, the funny thing is you can actually take like passages out of a book and see what Hemingway thinks about us. You're like, what does Hemingway think of, you know, Proust? <laughs> put it in, you know? So you can put anything in there. No, that's a great question. I'm sorry, I'm supposed to repeat the question when they ask it, but I think we got the point. Yes? Is there a cost involved? No, Hemingway is free. Hemi if you want to know if it, Hemingway was a, a paid for tool, it's a free tool. I'm, just so you know, so I don't look like a complete dork, I'm supposed to repeat the question for the video. <laughs> All right, this tool is not so much an editing tool in the sense of like the writing itself. This is to make sure your blog post is SEO friendly. And yay for everybody in here, this is the SEO tool I use, so I can give it a roaring thumbs up and say, way to go, Frank. Way to go, Frank. This is Yoast SEO plugin. The great thing about this plugin is it's easy to use because it gives you lights. So you get a green light if you've done a good job. <laughs> you get a yellow caution light if there's a few things that you might want to look at. You get a big red light, hey, don't publish this yet. It's not ready for SEO. <laughs> so you pick, and it, now, you can't see this, but I want you to know, it says focus keyword. Same thing, you can put a key phrase in. Don't put in a, a 10 word sentence, but if, you, if your key phrase is three words, here he has WordPress SEO plugins, that's okay to use, that can be a focus keyword. What you don't want to do is try to put a bunch of key phrases in here. No commas. One, so every blog post, and this is really hard for people sometimes, has to have one main focus. You can't be talking about SEO and content marketing and Twitter all in the same post and say they're all equally important as keywords. It can't do that. This is why it makes it so easy to use. You're going to focus on that keyword, and it's going to tell you different things. Now, he only did the, the very main screen. So what you do is you put in that focus keyword, and it tells you immediately, is it in your heading? Is it in your page title? Is it in the paid URL? Is it in your content? Yes, and how many times it's in your content? This time, apparently, it was 11 times. Really liked that keyword. And is it in your meta description? Yes. Underneath this screen, which you can barely see, there's another screen, which you can't see at all because it's not here. It actually will give you specific details. Uh, one of the ones that's always in there, you haven't used your keyword in the first paragraph. People usually do that. They, they think like they don't want to dive into the topic quite that quick. But even if you're rambling like I do at the beginning, make sure that keyword is in the first, the first paragraph. Another thing is that you don't have any links out to other sites. If there's no pertinent link to link out to, don't do it. You don't have to. You can get a main, okay, I want to tell you too. You'll be in your screen. Um, see how you can tell exactly what I'm talking about by this? <laughs> in your blog post, there's the, Yoast will be at the bottom underneath your post all the, the really expansive stuff. But up in the top right corner, you'll get an immediate, is it a green light? You can get a green light even if you have some caution lights on specific parts. It's a, it's a balance, it's a ratio. If you've mostly got green lights, it'll give you an overall green light at the top. And because you asked it earlier, yes, you can use this on your pages too, not just for your blog post. And I'm gonna tell you, it's easier to get a full green light, everything green on a blog post because that page will be very specific and it's content driven. If your homepage doesn't have a lot of content on it, it's more like calls to action and, and links to other places, it's gonna be hard to get a green light. Don't freak out if your homepage has a, a yellow light. If it has a red light, you got some work to do, but if your homepage has a yellow light, it's okay. Just wanted to say that because it does have a, you have to have so many words to get a green light, and some homepages don't have that much copy on them. You're not gonna be able to have that much copy. Don't feel like you have to try to stuff content in places on your, on your homepage to get, the, to get the green light. 
Any questions about Yoast? I really like Yoast, so I could actually answer them. <laughs> All right. Now, this is not something I've ever actually used, but this is for you to find an image that is suitable for your content. It's called the Image Inject plugin. I'm a graphic designer, so I have no problem having images are the first thing that's done in my Before I even write it, I've got the image in mind. <laughs> so I'm good there. This will help you find an image that, that suits your keyword. So you'll put your keyword in and search, and it's going to give you some ideas for image, images you can use. Okay. And of, of course, <laughs> these are not going to be Google images. You're not going to just copy somebody's Google image, right? Because that's bad. We don't do that. This is, I, I'm, I don't know 100%, but I'm thinking this is going to link you to resources that are free for you to use, or at least possibly with attribution. Again, I'm sorry, I couldn't test every tool that was in this before I gave the talk because I only found out about it like an hour. <laughs> so Pablo, now this I actually know about because it's a buffer tool. To get to it is buffer.com slash Pablo. It's kind of their answer to Canva, if anybody uses Canva or knows about Canva, but it's simpler. It's not quite as robust as Canva, and I don't, I don't think Canva's robust because I'm a Photoshop user, so. But it's even a lower level. It's pretty simple. It's basically just putting a picture in <laughs> and optimizing it for your use. So if you're not a graphic designer or if you, you know, you don't even feel comfortable with Canva, this might be a tool for you. And I love Buffer. Buffer is a fantastic service. We're going to talk about Buffer later when we talk about the promotion part. It is a fantastic service that I absolutely love. And they have great customer service. If you have any questions about using Pablo, they will answer quickly. And, and they're just, I can't say nice enough things about them. They're very transparent. Anything goes wrong, they fix it. You're good to go. Now, here's Canva. What happens with Canva is you can create images. And they have templates for different sizes of your images. So if you want a Pinterest image for pinning, you can pick that template. You can have a featured image for the top of the blog post to do featured image. And it's, it's a little more robust than Pablo. You can actually layer like your logo in the corner to use as a watermark if you want to. You can do some overlays and stuff like that. Because I'm a graphic designer, I know Nikki's going to laugh at me when I do this. I hate Here's one of the reasons, when you save your image, they're always one meg. So then you have to run it through some sort of optimizer so that they don't slow down your whole site, which I'm gonna give you a couple. If you wanna use Canva and you like it, that's no problem, but use TinyJPG or TinyPNG or Smush It. What's the other one, EU? I think that's in his speech, so there's those two. The images are really big that come out of Canva, so I just wanna warn you about that. Uh, JPG, JPEG, yeah. And it does PNG too if you, if you create one that isn't photo based. <laughs> Oh, I have no problems with the other ones. I think they do a fine job because if it's one meg, any call, any any optimization that happens from one meg is is a bonus. <laughs> but yes, if you have the tools to do that, um, but the you can do it in here, and uh, you can't see them, but it's got some happy Easter pictures. It makes them, they also have, you can use their stock photos that are free, but they also will let you buy images for a dollar. But I do warn you, even the ones that are a dollar, they've all been used a lot. So if you can find your own images someplace else and pull them in, you won't have an image that's already been seen all over the internet. You know when you go, you see like the same image in like 10 blog posts at once, you're like, are all these people going to the same place to make their images? <laughs> that happens when you use tools like this because because we're doing it because it's quick, because we don't want to take the time, and you, and you don't search all the way down, you just pick the first one that matches, and that's why you get repeat stuff. So that's me being a graphic designer. I'm stopping. <laughs> I'm shutting up now. <laughs> this is a tool, Kraken.io. It's an image optimizer, so it's a like the other ones I mentioned. Um, <coughs> if, you, if you think it's cool just because of the name, at least the Kraken, <laughs> then maybe you want to use this one. I didn't get a chance to look at it, but image optimizers are pretty much the same. They're going to take your image, and you'll need to read in the, in the comments about the image editor how it does it, if it does it lossy or not lossy. Because there are different ways to compress an image. Some of them will lose some of your the vibrancy because it, the way it compresses, it'll kind of minimize the look of your stuff. Um, I don't want to go into the whole thing about what lossy means. That is, no, again, another entire talk. But so this is one, and it's K-R-A-K-E-N. Sometimes Kraken has two Ks. This one only has one. <laughs> I, and here's what I was thinking of. It, I think it's EW, it might be E triple W <laughs> image optimizer, um, or E WWW image optimizer. And it, this is WordPress's image optimizer. So the W probably stands for Word something. But again, it's just another free <coughs> optimizer. There are lots of optimizers out there. By all means, use the one that you like. 
But the only reason we're bringing this up is because Canva images are so large. And sometimes even if you're using Photoshop yourself and you don't know how to optimize it within Photoshop, it's easier to make the image there and then optimize it elsewhere if you don't know how to use. Because there's a lot of different ways to optimize inside a true graphic program. And if you don't feel comfortable, you just kind of want to have somebody else do it for you, there's nothing wrong with that. All right. Here's his pre-published post checklist WordPress doc board. This is just gonna, it's just gonna ask you questions. Are you really, are you ready to publish this post? Have you checked the post title for your SEO? Have you made sure to put a featured image in there? And there's gonna be more, this is just the short list. <laughs> there's a drop down menu, but in this slide, I can't see the rest of it because it doesn't actually drop down or up to see the next step underneath. So, but this is gonna, it's gonna ask you very basic questions. Is it optimized for SEO, is your title there? Do you have a featured image? You know, have you checked it for writing and that kind of stuff? Um, I'm sorry, I actually missed something. I'm gonna go back real quick, I'm sorry to do this, but when we're talking about editing, like using um, Hemingway or something like that, when it comes to editing for like actual grammar and stuff like that, there is Grammarly and things like that, but as I, I already knew, but I was pointed out to me that it, it doesn't always do contextual grammar well. It doesn't get certain things. The best way, two best ways that are low techy techy to get your stuff edited, read it out loud, if you hear strange pauses, or even just a pause, put a comma, <laughs> or rewrite it. But it also will kind of let you know if your phrasing is a little off. If when you read it, you have to kind of stop and figure out what you're saying when you're reading it, that's a sign to rewrite something. And the second is get a second set of eyes. No, no, but even grammar Nazis, and I'll call myself one, don't need to publish their stuff without somebody else looking at it. They're gonna see things, just as with anything. When we're putting on our makeup in the morning, we think it looks great. We don't see the big fleck of mascara that we miss up the top of our eye because we're focused on it. It's the same thing. When we're writing, we see what we think is there because we were so invested in it. So we see what we think it should look like, not necessarily what it actually looks like. We don't see those missing commas or the accidental. There's a real trend lately of very random capitalization going on. Don't do that. Cities, yes. Countries, yes. Social media manager does not need to be capitalized. We're not that special, okay? It doesn't get all caps. Content marketer doesn't deserve the capital C and the M in the middle of a sentence. The C can be capitalized if it's at the start of a sentence. But other than that, we're, we're, these aren't, uh, I'm gonna do a horrible thing. We're not God, okay? Any of us, so. Um, so I'm, I go back, so go back to the pre-published checklist, so. And you can make your own checklist. Because we all have our own things that we want to do before we publish. So make your own checklist. You don't necessarily have to have a tool to do this. You can just have a little, your whiteboard next to your desk when you publish. Say, did I put, is my title, is my keyword in my title at the front? Is it close to the front, is it close to the front of the title as I can get it? So make your own checklist and just, you know, make sure, publish with intent, I think is the main goal we're trying to come up with here. All right, marketing, the fun part. How are we doing on time? Okay. Well, but I'm taking questions in the middle too, so I think we're okay. We'll run through this fairly quick. Click to tweet. He suggests better click to tweet, but there are several ways to click to tweet. But click to tweet is fantastic. You want your stuff to get shared more? Don't make them think about what to write if they don't want to just tweet your title. Do it for them. Put a provocative phrase in the middle there and have say click to tweet. When you when I use click to tweet, sometimes I put four or five in there. I'm always shocked at how many more shares I get. And I, I love Twitter, so I tend to get decent shares. I'm not, you know, I'm no rock star or anything. I'm not David Lee Roth up there. And now I'm really old, so I'm just David Lee Roth. <laughs> but, um, you know, use these. They're a great tool. All these click to, click to tweets are free, most of the plugins, and they're really easy to set up and use. Some of them allow you to change the graphics so you can add your own colors to them and stuff. I actually use one that's through a social sharing plugin called Social Warfare. It's my favorite plugin ever, so thumbs up to them in case you want to check it out. Social, social Warfare. Warfare. It's made by Warfare Plugins, and it incorporates the sharing buttons and the click to tweet, and it allows you to put a pinnable image in that when they click the pin button, it pulls up the pinnable image, not the horizontal one, which is great. So <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting off track there. A separate image? Yes. You don't have to put it in as your feature. <laughs> So, and it's a very lean plugin, just FYI. It doesn't take up a lot of resources, WordPress resources. So click to tweet is fantastic. Choose whichever tool you want. There's a lot of them out there. You can just look at, you can just check your plugins and put in click to tweet. They're all click to tweet of some sort or another. 
Revive old post. This is a very popular plugin that you can set to schedule your old posts to be shared, <laughs> very important, on Twitter. Twitter is the only place to repeatedly repeat sharing, okay? Because it's the only feed that's fast enough that you're not gonna get people really mad that think you only like yourself and you're only posting your own stuff, okay? If you posted the same blog post seven times to Facebook, somebody's probably gonna say something to you, okay? Same thing on like Google Plus or something. And Pinterest, you can do it, but you have to kind of time yourself to do it. But on Twitter, I'm telling you, repost. Repost your old articles. When you publish it the first time, don't share it once and think that's good. Share it six or seven times over the week. Do it at different times a day. But Revive Old Post is a plugin that will allow you to set that up so you don't have to think about it. I don't actually like this tool because I think it's kind of inorganic. I just scheduled them myself into Buffer. But if this is the kind of thing you won't remember to share old posts, this is a great tool for you. And you can give it parameters. You can actually customize it a little bit and let it know, like, don't do these posts ever, or do these posts in this order based on you know when it was published or by category or topic. You can do that. So, and there's a, there's a free version and there's a pro version. Okay. I use Buffer, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up Buffer in a minute because he he uses Hootsuite, and I know a lot of you use that. I'm a Buffer kind of gal, so we'll talk about both of those. Hootsuite, here it is. There's absolutely nothing wrong with scheduling the sharing of your blog posts. So you always hear about automation is a bad thing. There's nothing wrong about automating the share of your post, but you can't automate the interaction once you've already shared it. That you gotta go in and do yourself. So that's, that's my little you know, public service announcement about social media. Hootsuite is a very popular tool. It has free versions and there's all different sorts of add-ons and you can schedule and monitor your social media at the same time. So a buffer is only a scheduler, just a heads up real quick. It don't, doesn't allow you to monitor. So what you can do is you can set up your sharing column, you know, of where you're gonna schedule things. You can actually set up like hashtags to watch. You get to big, basically make columns of everything you need. So if anybody used to use TweetDeck, it's kind of the same thing. But it's not just Twitter. You get to do it for what, Facebook, um, they all have different ones. Some do Pinterest, some do Instagram, some do, so you have to pick and choose. But the big ones are in there. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google Plus are in pretty much every one of them. So Now, and when you get into Snapchat and all the rest of those, I have stopped. I said shiny object syndrome. I'm only gonna use the big five, so I don't even pay attention to those. But there is a free version, but it is gonna be limited into how many you can publish, or if you did, if you schedule publishes for more than one company, you're limited to how, how much you can. It's the same thing for Buffer. So I use Buffer, which is basically the same thing, but it's scheduling only. I like to do my monitoring natively, so I actually schedule in Buffer, but then I actually sit in my mentions tab in Twitter or whatever program. You can set up, you can set up mentions to get pinged when something happens, but I just like to do those natively, but that's me. We're all different, so if you like it all in one place, by all means use Hootsuite. For me, I don't tend to like the all-in-one solutions, but that's a personal thing. Some people really like all-in-one solutions. I don't want an all-in-one solution. I want to pick what works best for me in each, each part. Any questions? We're almost there. Now, ConvertKit is about sharing your content, but it's really about gathering email addresses. So this is a lot like you've heard of MailChimp, you've heard of, uh, what is it, Constant Contact? You've I, I've never liked Constant Contact, so I have to make about force myself to say it because I know how popular it is. Um, uh, MailChimp, there's Emma now. There are so many email programs now, and there's so many of them. I actually use ConvertKit, so I was really thrilled to see this, because it actually allows you to make different campaigns, so you can set up on different pages to people to go to different mailing lists to possibly sign up for. So you can actually set up a different one for every blog post if you wanted to. I wouldn't do that. That's an awful lot of lists to try to manage. <laughs> but if you have, like, say you write regularly about five different topics, you can actually say you write about content marketing, social media, graphics, blah, blah. You can set one for content meetings, uh, content marketing, social media, graphics, and blah, blah. You can set up a different sign-up form for each one. And just with a quick short code, you can put that at the bottom of every blog post. Or there's a plugin you can pull into WordPress that will actually let you just do a little drag and drop menu at the bottom and put it at the bottom of that post. Just depends on if you feel like you're, if you feel like you're plug-in heavy and you don't want to lose anything else, you can just use the short code. If that makes sense. Some people don't like to add plugins. They get some people have like this rule like ten plugins only. And if I go to eleven, I have to lose somebody else. <laughs> you don't have to necessarily do that. 
<laughs> but if you are like that, then go ahead. By all means, you can just use the short code. Does anybody have questions about ConvertKit? I know I did real short with it. So I have a client who's a vegan <laughs> consultant, so that she sells magnetics, sure. water filters, sure. vitamins, say. Sure. So if you if she posted things about magnetics, sure. And she could use this to direct them to a link to a list to MailChimp that is just about. No, not MailChimp. This actually does the email marketing too. It's a full email oh. service, so it's not MailChimp. No, you don't tie this to another one. This is its own whole. It's a full email system. It can do drip campaigns. It can do everything. It is not free. There's no forever free like MailChimp. Okay. It's I, of them all, though. I think it is very affordable. But no, it's the full system. That was a great question. So then in ConvertKit, you'd have a series of follow-up emails though. Yes, right? you can set up a drip campaign just like you can in anything. Yes. To talk about magnetic. Yes. And then she can have another one on the filters. Okay. Yes. Okay. Did you have one too? She, has my she asked your question. <laughs> oh, you copy <laughs> I like when that happens. No, it shows that I'm actually getting something in there. Yes, ma'am. If you have emails in another program, can you upload them? Yes. But again, even when you, you're still supposed to have everybody double opt in, so just be sure your list is recent and that they do still want to hear from you when you do that. Yes, you can. You can, you can import. Yes. But as with anything, if you're, if you're pulling emails that you got five years ago, don't do it. Don't. Bad idea. Bad idea. All right. And now, please tweet to me, no, to Frank, <laughs> at FP Corso. Or if you want to tweet to me, if you thought I did an okay job, or you know, passable, passable, right? Uh, you can tweet to me, and I'm go tweets to go. So, uh, is there are there any other questions about other things? You can ask me about other blogging tools if there's one you want to ask about. I'm, I'm happy to. I'll let you know if I've used it or never used it. <laughs> any others? Yes. What is your name? <laughs> Mally Hart. Mally. Mally Hart. And I'm really sorry about the slides, but I will. I'm going to run. I've been doing the social media, so if people have seen me, I've been in the happiness bar pretty much the whole conference except when I'm speaking. <laughs> so I'll be in there, and I will upload the slides immediately since we have this problem so that you can actually scroll through them if you want to. Yes? I think you went over this, but sure. in terms of the tracking, how a post performs or likes to share, sure. do you set some metrics for yourself to say, okay, if I get yeah, that's excellent. Sure, and what you have to do, you have to base this over time. You have to base it on how many followers you have already, too. So, yeah, um, and they're all different. As you know, Twitter tends to be faster. You'll get more shares, but they won't necessarily have read it. Okay? Really important, because that's true. Yeah, so you have to set different goals for yourself. So it's kind of like, you know when you go to the gym, and you're like, okay, I did three push-ups today. I got three shares today. So then you have your goal for four push-ups or four shares tomorrow. So it's that kind of thing. But it, it isn't personalized. But you can actually set up in your Google Analytics, you can set up custom things for social sharing too. So you can, if you want like the real, you know, the specific, but if you just want to check on yourself, like Buffer has simple analytics so you can see which ones were the most popular, so you can see like what the topic was that got shared more than others. And all Hoots, we all have that kind of stuff too. Okay? But you can actually set up serious specific on each post itself. You can set up an audience for that post itself. And we're talking about some serious Google Analytics stuff there. You probably need somebody who's like Google Analytics Pro to help you set it up perfectly. Um, but you can set up specific things to watch for in, in Google Analytics. Anybody? Um, yes? Um, that's a good question. Increasing traffic. I would say social media is a great tool for increasing traffic, but you have to be on a social media channel that you enjoy being on. Don't try to put yourself on all of them thinking you're going to increase traffic and do a, excuse my language, half-assed job on every one of them. You have to go in wholehearted. So pick one you like. If you have great visuals on your site, Pinterest. I know everybody thinks it's a site for ladies, but it gets great conversion for articles with good images. It doesn't matter what the topic is, really. We had a legal firm just had these, like, kind of, blank but really provocative statements and they've got their biggest referrer was Pinterest. So um, other things that would be, um, here's some other ways you can do stuff, go and uh, comment on other blogs. It tends to cause people to go and want to comment on yours. It's kind of a reciprocal thing. It seems silly but it works. Now, you have to pick and choose. Do you want to comment on your main competitor sites? Maybe not, but peers. Peers in the industry, that can be a great way to increase traffic. Um, taking part in conversations on social, even if you don't have a lot of stuff to share, people will want to check you out. If they see your handle showing up in social media, they'll go and click your link and want to check you out. So other than that, um, we can talk later if you want to. We can talk private if you want to. There's more specific things. 
Yes, ma'am. I could add to that. Just be yourself. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely true. That was my talk yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, be true to yourself. Don't pretend to be anybody else. Anybody else? To get the blogging. He has a toolkit. His blogging toolkit PDF is frankcorso.me slash toolkit. I'm sorry, I didn't realize there was another slide. I thought that I thought the Twitter was. Thank you for saying that. Let me know. It's Frank Corso, and it's Frank as usual, C O R S O dot me slash toolkit. All one word, no dashes. What is that? Yeah. What is the Are you on the Slack channel? Okay, I'll, I will, because I did it, I'll post them to me saying, hey, I got to be Frank today, and I'll put a link to the slide. So look for the WCHL hashtag on Twitter. Okay. It might be a little bit, I gotta go and actually like all the other topics. Thank you.